As we've learned in our study of urban models, cities in different regions grew in different ways depending on many factors. In Africa, there exists a colonial history, a historic traditional history, and then you also have cities in countries such as South Africa where many of the cities are essentially the same as modern European and North American cities. And because of this, there really isn't a one-size-fits-all model for African cities. The Dublé model named after its founder, Harm de Blay, shows three CBDs in sub-Saharan African cities. One of them is a colonial CBD consisting of elements of that era. Another CBD focuses on the traditional history and contains smaller one-story buildings with a traditional feel. The markets are outdoor, open-air markets where people set up stalls with goods from neighboring farming areas or whatever other wares they may be selling. Just outside the CBD lies a concentric zone where various ethnic neighborhoods exist. Africa, especially Sub-Saharan Africa, contains many ethnic groups and since cities are always heterogeneous, and in this case also super fast growing, these ethnic groups tend to cluster together outside the CBD. Africa is full of many natural resources, so it's not a shocker that lots of the cities in the continent emerge as mining centers. This still persists today, and you can see this activity on the model. There are also industries located closer to the outside of ethnic neighborhoods, which places them close to a potential labor force. Finally, due to the extremely fast growth of cities, squatters have developed squatter settlements or shanty towns on the periphery, just like with South American cities. These areas are a source of major concern. There's often no sanitation, absolutely zero planning, and no way to get services to people in need. The McGee model is named after its founder T.G. McGee, and it describes the development of a South Asian city. The South Asian city model was centered on the colonial port. The port contained commercial activity and was surrounded by a concentric zone with mixed land use. This means that there were industries, housing, and other types of economic activities. The activities that make up the CBD are spread between the government sector and the Asian and Western commercial zones. The next concentric zone is the middle density residential zone. It's important to note that this zone is reflective of the growing middle class in South Asian cities. As we enter into the next zone, we start to see a combination of new suburbs as the middle class expands, but also we see sectors of squatter residents interspersed within the zone. The people who sell in these sectors don't actually own the land, and there's sanitation issues and very little infrastructure and all the other things that we've talked about in other videos. The outside zone is used for market gardening with an industrial sector included on the periphery. Finally, and importantly, there's a high class sector that stems from the government zone. This is similar to the elite zone that you see along the spine in the Latin American city model. Regarding growth of cities in any region, models don't serve as a one-size-fits-all. And in South Asian countries, the economic differences from one city to another may account for some dramatic changes from what we just discussed in the McGee model. Some cities in the region are very developed and more upscale in comparison to others. And some cities may contain residents with more wealth and may have economies based in service activities. Other cities in the region may be more based in secondary economic activities and may serve as a place to receive migrants that are looking to make a change from an agrarian lifestyle. What I'm saying is when you study models, you have to remember they are just that, models. They show a snapshot of how a phenomenon might look given certain parameters, which can help geographers make sense out of the why of where. But they don't serve as definitive examples of what you're going to see all the time. I hope this video helps you understand these models with a little bit more clarity. If you found it helpful, please like and share with your friends or coworkers. Also, consider subscribing to the channel. Taking the time to do these things is going to help me to grow my channel and enable me to provide you with some more great content over time. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you guys in the next video.